In today's video, I'm gonna be counting down my top five most effective favorite fishing lures, specifically as it applies to freshwater multi-species fishing. And with each lure, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about how and when to fish it and give you specific examples of the brands and the colors that I love to use. We're gonna get right into it, but before we do, if you guys do enjoy the video today or learn something of value here, I'd appreciate it if you'd like the video and subscribe to the channel. And after watching the video, let me know down in the comments what you guys think was missing from the list or if I got it in the wrong order. And now, let's count them down. Coming in at number five on my list is the jerkbait. The jerkbait is a fantastic and wildly effective struggling bait fish imitation. And spoiler alert, four of my top five freshwater multi-species lures are gonna be bait fish imitations. Now jerk baits come in a variety of sizes, colors, and diving depths, but the common attributes are going to be a realistic bait fish profile and an erratic action when retrieved properly. And because it has that natural appearance, but also that erratic action, it can trigger both predation and reaction bites. Now the intended retrieve for a jerk bait is with quick jerking motions followed by intermittent pauses on slack line. And most often it's during those pauses that the fish will seize the opportunity to capture that struggling bait fish. And in my experience there isn't a predatory fish out there that won't attack a struggling bait fish. Now the jerk bait like any of the five lures we're going to discuss today can be fished year round but I specifically like to pull out the jerk bait during the summer when fish are schooling and all through the entire fall season into the early winter time. Often when fish are schooling together and that goes for any predatory fish one fish will attack a bait fish and injure it. And once the bait fish is injured, it's fair game for any of the other fish in that school that are competing for food to swoop in and eat that bait. And throughout the fall season into early winter, during those drastic water temperature changes, that's when a lot of the bait fish, specifically shad, start to struggle. It's also the time of year that a lot of those bait fish spawns that happened from hatches earlier in the year are starting to reach the size that closely resembles the typical jerk bait. As a result, a lot of those predatory fish, your bass, your walleye, your pike, your muskie, your trout, all of those fish are starting to key in on those struggling bait fish. Now as a bank angler, I tend to use the one to three foot divers and the three to five foot divers, those shallow water suspending jerk baits. Now when it comes to specific brands, I have three that I'll typically throw and they're virtually interchangeable. They're all super high quality. But among these three brands, you're gonna find unique colors that you just won't find with other brands. My three favorite jerk baits in no particular order are gonna be the Provoke 106X by Six Sense, the Mega Bass Vision 110, and the Loco Special by 13 Fishing. I'm putting links in the description to my favorite jerk baits and I'll be naming my favorite colors down there if you wanna check it out. And that goes for all five of the lures that we're gonna talk about today. And now let's move on to number four. Now at number four, we're actually gonna have a two-way tie. And why is that, you ask? It's because I make the rules for my videos. But the real reason is because these two lures, while they do have some differences, are also very, very similar in the way that I fish them. Coming in at number four is the blade bait and the lipless crankbait. The blade bait and the lipless crankbait are both bait fish imitations with a hard vibrating action, but the main difference between them is that the lipless crankbait is going to have sound with it in the form of BBs or knockers inside of the lure. Because the lipless crankbait is a louder lure with a wider profile, I like to think of it as the power fishing technique while the blade bait is the finesse technique. With both of these lures, I typically like to fish them over the top of grass because they're both really good at coming through the grass, or I'll fish them on rock, gravel, or sandy bottoms. Now, both of these lures can also be very effective if you're gonna fish them tight to cover, but if you're gonna fish them tight to cover, specifically the blade bait, you better be ready for some frustration because the blade bait and the lipless crankbait both have a tendency to get snagged up on some cover. And the blade bait also has a tendency to snag some fish unintentionally. So you might wanna stay away from the blade bait if you're fishing in water that's heavily infested with carp. There's a tip for you. All right, now the main reason that the blade bait and the lipless crankbait are taking the number four spot ahead of the jerk bait is because these baits have a bigger variety of retrieves. Either of these baits are perfectly suited for a steady retrieve or you can burn them through the grass. You can also yo-yo the bait back to you by bouncing it off the bottom as you retrieve it in. And you can also vertically jig the blade bait or the lipless crankbait. And specifically the blade bait is very effective for vertical jigging in deep water or through the ice. Now both of these lures, because of that versatility with the different retrieves that you can do, are truly year round baits. But I typically will throw the lipless crankbaits in the early springtime and the blade baits in late fall 
into the winter, into that cold water. Now with respect to brands, there are a lot of really good lipless crankbaits and blade baits out there, but my favorite lipless crankbaits are gonna be the Duke 65 by Six Sense Fishing and the Quake 80 Suspending also by Six Sense Fishing. The Quake 80 Suspending is a special lipless crankbait because it provides you with an additional retrieve option. With the Quake 80 Suspending lipless crankbait, you can actually retrieve it with long sweeping motions of the rod and at the end, you pause and because it suspends in the water, it looks a lot more natural. And just like with the suspending jerk baits, that suspending lipless crankbait will often get hit on the pause when it stops and hovers right there in the middle of the water column. Now when it comes to blade baits, I like the Slice by Six Sense and the Dyna Response by Megabass. And with the blade baits, I will also often modify those with a willow blade on the back or a feathered treble. And both of those modifications will add some extra action that will just entice those fish to bite. And that's it for the blade and lipless crankbait. So let's move on and down the countdown to lure number three. Number three on our list is a spoon, and a spoon really doesn't look much like a fish at all. It's just a piece of metal with a hook on it. But spoon lures have a very special fluttering or wobbling action that closely resembles a dying or injured bait fish. Spoons can come in a lot of different sizes, shapes, and weights for small variations in the action, but ultimately it's gonna be that fluttering or wobbling action. They can come in a lot of natural colors and finishes that closely resemble the local bait fish population or they can come in some bright, vivid, striking colors that catch the eye of those predatory fish and trigger reaction strikes. They'll typically come with a treble hook attached, but you can also fish them with a single hook or there are weedless options as well. The retrieves that you use for a spoon are gonna be very similar to the ones that you use for a blade bait. You can throw that long cast out there and do a slow, steady retrieve back to you, or you can do a yo-yo style retrieve where you let it hit bottom, bounce it up, let it flutter down as you reel in some of that slack and repeat the process all the way back to you. Or you can jig a spoon up and down vertically. You can do this out in open water or you can do it through the ice. One of my favorite things about the spoon is the castability, especially as a bank angler. Spoons are extremely aerodynamic. So if you have a half ounce or three quarter ounce spoon and some light braided line, you can cast those suckers a mile out from the bank. Now spoons can be extremely effective year round, especially for suspended or schooling fish, but I tend to bring them out more in the fall and winter time, especially when there are drastic temperature changes and those bait fish, particularly shad, start to struggle. And when it comes to my favorite brands of spoons, if I'm going weedless, I'll typically use a Johnson Silver Minnow or a Daredevil weedless spoon. And otherwise, I almost never deviate from the classic Acme Tackle Little Cleos and of course, the Daredevil spoons. And if I had to pick just one, I'm going with Daredevil. And now let's move on to number two in the countdown. Coming in at number two on the countdown is the inline spinner. And the inline spinner looks nothing like a bait fish. It doesn't look like a bait fish at all. The inline spinner is actually constructed with a spoon that is affixed to a straight wire, some type of weight and a hook. The spoon or blade on the inline spinner spins around that straight wire and causes a lot of vibration and water displacement. But the spoon on an inline spinner doesn't produce the same action as it does with your traditional spoon. It's a much harder vibration and that hard thumping vibration generates a lot of reaction strikes from just about every predatory fish out there. Like the spoon, the inline spinner has great castability. So for a bank angler like me, that is a huge deal. Now the retrieves with an inline spinner aren't going to be as numerous as the retrieves that you get with a spoon or a blade bait. It's typically just fished with a steady retrieve. With an inline spinner, I'm going to make a long cast. I'm going to count the lure down through the water column into that strike zone and do a steady retrieve all the way back. And while you're not gonna have a lot of those options with your retrieve that you get from the spoons and the blade baits and stuff like that, the simplicity of it makes it one of the easiest lures to fish with. And every fish out there is susceptible to being annoyed and inline spinners do a fantastic job of pissing off fish and making them bite. Now when it comes to brands of inline spinners, if I'm fishing for smaller fish like panfish or small smallmouth bass, I'll typically break out the ultralight setup and throw a Panther Martin size one or two spinner. And when the fish get a little bit bigger, like in that two to five pound range, I'll typically use like a Meps Aglia size three or four or a Meps Black Fury size three or four. But my favorite inline spinner by far is the Arctic Spinner. The Arctic Spinner alone almost bumped up this category for me to number one. It was very close, a very hard decision because this particular year, the Arctic Spinner has caught more fish and more different species for me 
than just about anything else in my tackle box. I'm telling you guys, the Arctic Spinner is basically a cheat code and turns anyone into a good fisherman. And now, without further ado, let's finish the countdown at number one. Number one on the countdown is the Finesse Swim Bait or Soft Plastic Swim Bait. And this might come as a shocker to some of you, but it's also a bait fish imitation, a lifelike bait fish imitation. The super lifelike profiles, actions, and colors of today's modern finesse swim baits generate predation strikes from just about every species of predatory fish. And the finesse swim baits are also gonna be the most versatile in terms of rigging options and retrieves, allowing you to target a variety of fish in almost any environment. There are also a variety of actions that come with finesse swim baits, generally determined by the tail. You have your paddle tails, your wedge tails, your boot tails, your flutter tails. All of these different types of tails are going to create some variance in the action that you're receiving from your finesse swim bait, but ultimately you're creating a lifelike bait fish imitation. Now my preference with the finesse swim bait is to try and color match a jig head to a soft plastic in a way that accurately represents the bait fish that are present in the body of water I'm fishing. When the water is clear, I'll generally choose a soft plastic that is translucent and natural in color, and then when it's stained, I'll go with the same color but more bright and opaque. All of these lures are super effective for multi-species fishing, but the main reason the finesse swim bait is taking the number one spot is because it is the most immune to fishing pressure. Because the finesse swim bait is so natural and lifelike, it almost doesn't matter how many times a fish has seen the same presentation. That fish may have been caught already on a swim bait earlier that week or even earlier that day, but they're not going to stop eating their primary forage. The modern finesse swim baits of today are nearly indiscernible from the real thing. Now, now when it comes to brands, there are a couple of clear front runners for me that have landed me a ton of fish and a variety of species, and those are going to be the 3 inch or 4 inch whale by Six Sense Fishing and the quarter ounce dark sleeper by Mega Bass. For the 3 inch whale, I'll typically fish that on an 8 ounce or quarter ounce divine jig head, also by Six Sense, or an 8 ounce or quarter ounce treble head, which is a line through jig head, also by Six Sense. And for the 4 inch whale, I'll fish them the same way but on a quarter or half ounce jig head. And the quarter ounce Mega Bass dark sleeper has been a huge player for me this year in multi species fishing. The Dark Sleeper is especially effective here in the Great Lakes region because we have gobies present in just about every body of water, and they're a big annoyance to the predatory fish, but also a big food source. It started out for me as a super effective lure for smallmouth, but I quickly learned that it catches a shocking variety of species. All right, guys, well, that's going to do it for the list of my top five multi-species fishing lures, and I'm very curious to hear what you guys think was missing from the list or if you think I got it in the wrong order, so don't forget to let me know down in the comments. As a reminder, I'm leaving links down in the description to all of the lures we talked about today and naming my favorite colors down there as well. If you're just starting out as a multi-species fisherman and you fill your tackle box with these five lures, I guarantee you will have success catching multiple different species. If you did enjoy the video today or learned something of value here, I'd appreciate it if you'd like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.